Any guys, so Oregon is hosting. Oregon's hosting one of my favorite, favorite, um, you know, players in this class. And this is somebody that I believe can make a difference because, you know, you have Mateo Ugalangalale, um, that is going to be, you know, now going to be probably your Jack, you know, linebacker role. Brandon Doralis probably going to declare for the draft, probably going to be taking, an, an, you know, back half of the first, maybe the second round. Um, purchase is a stud, Blake Purchase. So I think Purchase is also going to be your edge rushers. So you have really talented uh, edge rushers. Elijah Rushing is going to come in as a true freshman, be a great edge rusher. Hopefully, Jeremiah Johnson can come in and be a uh, and be a tremendous. Uh, hopefully, you get. I think his name is is, is Johnson from uh, from California. That's another defensive tackle that they are after. Casey Rogers going to graduate. Um, you know, you need somebody at the middle of this defense now to stabilize it. And if you get Walter Nolan and pair him with Mateo, um, maybe Jordan Birch even comes back for one more year. This is going to be unfair. I mean, Blake Purchase is going to come in there. Um, just with the with the guys that they really have on the edges. You know, Michael Gardner still a freshman. Um, and, and, and so, you know, if you put Walter Nolan with this, with this group, I think Walter Nolan's going to be like Quinn and Williams. Quinn and Williams, again, was kind of a late bloomer in the process, you know, was a guy who exploded in his junior season and is now wreaking havoc for the New York Jets in the National Football League. Walter Nolan was the number one player in the country, I think, in the 2021 recruiting class. He was even higher rated than Travis Hunter, okay? Walter Nolan, believe he's like 6'5", probably 320, incredibly mobile. And this year, he he was at a stacked Texas A&M defensive line, okay? And Walter Nolan came in there, and he accumulated a couple of sacks this year, got some tackles for loss. For these big guys, these defensive tackles, they really thrive going into their junior seasons. Okay? Six foot four player, all right, and he's out of Knoxville, Tennessee. So this is going to be a competitive recruitment. Tennessee is after him in the process. Oklahoma is making a push. So many people are making a push. He had 20 solo tackles, and he had four sacks. So he's projected to now make that jump to hopefully getting maybe double-digit sacks. He could potentially be an All-American type of of defensive player. Um, And I'm sure he's looking at how successful Jordan Birch was when Birch and Doralis were on this defensive line. Also, Tosh Lapoy in his time in Alabama has coached some of the best defensive linemen. I mean, like Jonathan Allen, Deron Payne, which are also first-round picks, you know, for Washington. So Walter Nolan is, if Oregon lands Walter Nolan, that could even be maybe even a more substantial recruiting win than maybe even getting... I mean, Dylan Gabriel is tremendous too, but Walter Nolan could just take this defensive line to to unfair levels. Mateo, Elijah Rushing, five stars. Walter Nolan, uh, Blake Purchase is a, is a four star that was really, really um, impactful as a freshman. Um, the back end is, I think, getting more experienced. They're probably going to continue to attack that. Um, I'm telling you guys that Walter Nolan... Uh, can can take this Oregon defense to a level that could be really, really special. And for Walter Nolan, I don't think there's a better place to come get developed than Oregon. I mean, Oregon, their whole defense, you know, this year you have Doralist that is going to go high in the draft who had a very productive year. Jordan Birch. Mateo is going to free up things on the inside for him as well. Elijah Rushing looks like a ready-to-play freshman that as an edge rusher can come in and be like Mateo, especially later in the season. He can come in and make an immediate impact, all right? Also have like Aiden Brand, I want to say, is also a player. So Oregon's defensive line, they put a ton, a ton into it. 
Um, Casey Rogers came from Nebraska, was really good with Tony Toyoti. So Tony Toyoti, again, just, just he's very effective at coaching to stop the run. And he knows how to handle big bodies and he knows how to coach big body linemen. So if there's a place you want to get developed, want to, want to ball out, compete for a national title and make it to the draft, Oregon is your spot. Oregon is trying to be an SEC or a big, a physical Big Ten defense from a Pac-12 footprint. And they've done that even this year. They lost to Washington by a combined six points. Okay. They didn't, they had one bad half, I would say, the entire season. And then they almost went to Seattle and they, they, they were right there with a one play away on fourth down from winning that game and from having an undefeated season. And their margin of victory was, was unbelievable. Exclude Texas Tech, Oregon in like every single game was winning every game by three scores, but winning every game by like at least 20 points, in some cases 30 or 40 points. So Oregon was a dominant, dominant team, all right? They just have to get over the hump, okay? Dylan Gabriel can help that. I think Washington will likely decrease next year. Ohio State's going to be tough in the Big Ten. I know it's funny we're talking about Oregon football in the Big Ten Conference, but Walter Nolan, this is super exciting. The fact that Dan Lanning, Tosh Lapoy, the fact that they were able to get Walter on the first official visit, hopefully they can lock it down this weekend. Marshall Malkow, the Oregon general manager, Marshall Malkow, was the, guy, was the architect behind that elite Texas A&M recruiting class. Thank you guys for watching. Let's monitor Walter Nolan, and he should hopefully have a tremendous, tremendous time in Eugene this weekend and hope he commits to the Ducks.